Hey, oh, another video from the Angry Photographer here. Let's talk about secret lens you must get. Um, <clears throat> I've been waiting to actually introduce this one for a while, but a few people asked about it, and because the 135mm 2.8, as many people have complained, alas, unfortunately, due to my video, the prices have skyrocketed on the video, on the uh, on this uh, lens. Um, I uh, recommend this lens. Now, am I recommending it as a supplement as well? This is the next best thing. No. Uh, so where do I place it? I place it equally beside it. Not only that, it is a wee wee hair sharper than the 135 uh, 2.8 or the 135 millimeter 3.5. Now, are you going to notice any sharpness if you had both of these lenses? If you are a pixel peeper and the FX 36 uh, megapixel a camera and you blew them up to 150 percent maybe but are you realistically going to see any difference between the sharpness between the two no so what is the lens that changed uh... the face of photography and icons image and actually created the world's most famous photograph of all time created almost 30 years ago to the day here is the image from June 1985 National Geographic I sure I'm sure you recognize it you can go to the oddest ass cracks of the world and most people have actually seen this image the girl the Afghan refugee girl with the haunting green eyes that are ringed with blue what is the lens I recommend? I've been waiting to do this video for some time. This is not a supplement to the 135. Like, well, this is the next best thing. No, it stands alone. It is the Nikkor 105mm Aperture 2.5. Let's take a look at it compared to the 135 2.8. Here I have on my right hand, you can see the difference. Both have, of course, built-in metal lens hoods. You can see the difference there. It is a five element lens construction. This is the lens that took the world's most famous image. Obviously, the lens isn't, didn't take the image. Obviously, it was the photographer, and of course, it was the right situation, the right subject. A lot of things came together. But this is that lens taken almost 30 years ago today. And how do I rate this lens compared to the 135 3.5 or the 135 2.8 that I have next to it? Well, I don't rate them. I can't say, well, this one's better than this one. Depends on whether you're going to shoot this on an FX or a DX. Some people actually might like this as a headshot lens, better or a better upper body lens on a, uh, I have APS-C crop sensor mode, effective uh, focal. Obviously, it's cropped, but an effective of 150-some millimeters on a DX camera. But this is the 105 2.5 Nikkor. It is a five element construction lens. It is uh, incredible precision, just like my top recommendation, the 135 2.8. I can't say, well, this is better than this. This is. Both of these lenses are incredible. I had this lit. I've got a list of like 60 some videos to make, and I keep adding videos every day. But I had to add move this uh, video up some because more than a few people were asking about it and that's few people that actually know about this lens what I call this the secret lens I mean it seems that most people have forgotten about it I mean you can still now of course I'm saying it now at the making of this video as soon as I make this video and post it obviously everything's going to change but currently you can snag this lens typically for like a hundred hundred twenty dollars are things going to change after making this video? They probably are, but I have no control over supply, obviously. So, this is it. The 105 Aperture 2.5. This is the uh, wonderful, incredible. Um, it's incredibly sharp. I mean, it is just made like a freaking tank. Do I place it on the awesome scale above the 135 millimeter 2.8 or 3.5? that I have here in my right hand you no. Know. so where do I place it? I place it as a 105 millimeter lens versus 135 millimeter it's literally about that simple construction is identical quality of construction obviously it's more compact a little bit better of a portrait lens on a DX camera than the 135 is for obvious reasons not by drastically much a perfect little lens I can almost stick in my pocket or stick in my jacket pocket um, it's just flat out incredible. I don't know what else to say about it other than that. Um, 
This lens has uh, made uh, Nikon slightly famous. It is a famous little lens. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, regarding the creation of the world's most famous image, which this lens took, the 105mm 2.5, i.e. the Afghan woman, a little story here. I was going to direct you. You could actually uh, purchase this off of iTunes or whatnot. It's about uh, the search for the Afghan girl. Here, 30 years later, almost to the month, I'm talking about June of 1985, National Geographic set out to find this girl, who of course is now an adult, and they brought in ophthalmologist to check her eyes, and then they brought in a CIA uh, forensic uh, forensic examiners that actually uh, examined people's faces, and uh, National Geographic went to extreme lengths to find this woman, because her image from all those years ago enthralled so many people, such a haunting image, a ghostly image, as you can see, her clothes are in tattered, they're ripped and shredded here, and you have a ghostly image staring back at you. This is compositionally beautiful, it's geometrically beautiful, it is... It is the, the intersection of every divine parameter of photographic beauty, something that is mysterious, haunting, enthralling, and rapturing, and uh, this is the lens that created it. Obviously the photographer created it, and obviously it was the subject. The lens can't do anything by its own. But, uh, you can check that out. It's called Search for the Afghan Girl. It's uh, from National Geographic. And uh, But that's the lens that created the world's most famous image. And uh, as I said already, how sharp is this lens? Well, it is damn sharp. I mean, it is holy shite sharp. Um, like I said, only a hair, hair sharper than the 135. Like I said, do I compare the two? No, I don't. How do I compare them? It's like comparing brother and sister. Um, you know, one's good for one thing, another one's good for the other thing. They're both equally divine, superior construction. Um, since so many people peeped about how expensive this lens is now due to my recommendation and everybody that's got one is just like, oh my god, it's so sharp and beautiful. You will have equal happiness since this lens has basically almost become, not extinct, but just insanely expensive on eBay. You'll be as happy with this lens as you would the 135. I had this lens on the list, but since so many people were peeping about the 135 being so damn expensive now, I had to move it up the list and include it, and I thought that you would like the little story about this lens creating the world's most famous image of the haunted Afghan girl. Not the haunted, but uh, the, uh, the Afghan refugee girl with the haunting eyes and the dirty face. Of course, uh, discussing the, the beauty of this image, of course. And it goes without saying, everybody recognizes it, but nobody goes into the empirical uh, criteria of what makes this such an incredible photograph and why basically the entire world has seen this image. There are very few people, unless there's a really remote area of the world, has not seen this image even though this image now is almost 30 years old. Exactly to the month, just a couple months away from 30 years ago that this image was posted on National Geographic front cover of the magazine in June 1985. So, my highest recommendation, flat out bar none, you will be happy as a worm in a giant pile of poo. And that is the 105mm f2.5 Nikkor AI or AIS. And here it is, and here it is compared to those of you that have the 135 or maybe considering about getting another lens as far as its size. I have a filter on this one, so it's not actually that tall. Let me actually bring the lens hood down on this one. It was kind of sitting slightly cockeyed there. There we go. There's the two compared. Extremely compact. Like I said, five element. Yes, I'm repeating myself, so what? Get over it. Um, still cheap. How long that lasts, I have no idea. I only make the video. I don't supply the lenses. So, there are a lot of them out there, and it is just absolutely freaking incredible. I'm not placing it above the 135. I'm not placing it below like this. Oh, well, this is a secondary alternative because I know that's exactly what people are going to ask. That's not the case. I'm strictly stating that this lens is the cat's damn ass. It is sharp as hell. 
and you will be as happy with this lens as you will be the 135. Obviously the only difference is very wee wee bit sharper, wee bit, very tiny wee bit sharper and the fact that it is a little bit more compact and obviously it is 105 millimeter versus a 135 millimeter so 35 millimeters less than the focal length uh, somewhat of a consideration on DX obviously so this is a better portraiture lens on a DX not that the 135 isn't and also an equally sublime portraiture lens um, but this is more suited to DX although this is of course where he dates DX and FX digital uh, cameras obviously but uh, perfect for FX or DX either camera that you have you will be sublimely happy with it remember there is a no non CPU a lens data entry on the, these lenses as far as the D3000 series or the D5000 series so you have no uh, non CPU uh, lens data setting entry for these older lenses like you do on the D700, D7000, D7100, D7200, D800, D810 etc etc D uh, D, uh, D4S. So, highest recommendation, can't give any higher. Sits right alongside her sister, the 135.28 or the 135.3.5. And that is this, the 105.2.5, the lens which created the world's most famous image. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can always drop me a buck or two or tell me what cliff to jump off of. I'm happy to provide you with a Excellent alternative. Not saying that it is like, and as I said before already, this is not like, well, this is a backup choice to the 135. I'm not stating this as well that, you know, if you can't find this lens, then here's this lens. That's not the case at all. Both are equally valid in their own right. They both stand alone. They're both superior, excellent, supreme, divine, sublime zooms that will make whatever sort of hanging appendage that you have fall off and roll down the street. So, thanks for watching so much and try to snag yourself a Nikkor 105mm 2.5.